Quail Hound do there? Jumps, Desari, Captain Steve. Yes, yeah, I'm wearing my No Man's Sky cap. Check this out. Look, it's got like a little, little Atlas sign on it. It says No Man's Sky on the back. Got this from the meetup. Yes, the one where we got gift boxes from Hello Games. This was in my gift box. I haven't wore it yet. So, yeah, I thought, why not sport it and wear it on my actual live stream? You can see my little eye lick in the background there. You probably saw him on my intro video. He's a cute little robot. You can probably hear his little gyros going, though. <laughs> He's pretty darn cool, isn't he? I guess he is. Hmm, what's going on there? A PC audio. Okay, all good. I think all my levels are fine. Anyway, people in the view of us, what have I got to tell you today? Oh, we're looking at the polls. Let's go on over. Let's have a look at the polls that I did on my actual YouTube community tab. So here we go. Bow. There we go, people. Yeah, got my little Winamp going over here. They are lovely jobs, my Winamps. Lovely jubbly. And we've got all this going on over here. So I put out two polls, what people like in the verse and what people don't like in the verse. The things that people like, I put over the space of two polls. This is two of two. And there we go, there's one of two there. So you kind of have to combine these together. And then further down, I put here, what do you think damages or harms the community the most when it comes to YouTube content creation? And I've got a little poll down here as well. There's like a little bit of a split out that we've got going on there. Uh, uh, let's just um, let's just mute this off a little bit for now because I'm worried you might get an echo from the music or something. Right, so let's have a look see because I put these into an image and I put them next to each other. We'll read the comments in a moment, but let's make this nice and big. Boom! There we go. Okay, I can leave those on the screen. That's not really that's not really getting in the way of much. So here you go. So over on this side you've got the bad. Let's just move it out. Caught the bad, and over this side you've got the good. Okie dokie. So on the good, you've actually got stuff like speculation here, yeah? 14% of people like speculation videos. And that's what they went with as the thing that rings out true from all of these things. So, you know, they, they might like it, but maybe not as much as some of the other things. But that's cool that it's on the good list. On the bad list, you've also got 13% of people that don't like speculation. Maybe because it does border on overhype. It sets people up to expect something that might not happen. I always say never set speculation as expectations. But sometimes I guess some people can't keep that in check. And yes, it can cause some damage out there. So yeah, some people, if you don't like speculation, I always put in the video title speculation or somewhere on the thumbnail. Or I say it in the first couple of lines of the video. I'm doing some speculation. So you always know whether it's for you or not. If you're in that 13% of people there that really don't like speculation, I do make it nice and clear on my videos, so it's, it, it, hopefully you can just ignore those videos. But I, I really enjoy doing speculation. It's one of the things that I like doing the most. Ideas and speculation, that's what I would have hit as being the main thing that I like. And 14% of other people out there in the, in the verse enjoy that about No Man's Sky. And they had a lot to choose from. This list is a lot shorter. So there's probably far more people that are tolerant of the speculation, is where, where I'm going for on this. <laughs> I'm going freaking mental over there, people. Yeah, it's such a cool little droid. They're a Kickstarter thing, those Ilex. If you want one, they're really hard to get hold of. You just have to keep searching on eBay and just hope that one somebody puts one up for adoption. Um, yeah, they're, they're really cool. Um, yeah, I probably would have put um, a, a trailer video to this, the Ilex. But if not, I put a link in the top right-hand corner if you want to learn more about that little robot, because he is really cool. Anyhow, moving on, another thing that's on both lists is a duplication. Duplication is quite a thing that sort of... I, I get a lot of comments when I do a duplication video. It's like, Captain Steve, I've lost all respect for you for doing this. This, this is naughty. Pow! Bad, Captain Steve. Bad! <laughs> but, you know, we've now got the whole God mode switch, so we can get things on the fly anyway. So, you know, duplication has always been in-game. In day dot, there was one right at the start where if you flew out of the, the actual space station, any space station, after creating an autosave, and then you got yourself blown up by shooting the space station and letting the sentinels kill you and all the sentinel ships come out and then when you respawned it put your grave straight outside of the actual atlas you could fly out pick up your grave and double your inventory <laughs> because it gave you all the stuff inside of it when you respawned it gave you all your stuff back and then you flew out collected your grave and you got it twice um, yeah, so there's always been very strange ways of duplicating stuff in No Man's Sky, and some of them have been hilariously brilliant. Um, I mean, I say brilliant in, 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 
Is it brilliant? I don't know, you know, but they've always been there in some sort of guise. Now, if you want duplication videos, there are channels just dedicated to doing duplication videos. You know, Professor Cynical springs to mind. I mean, that guy's a freaking master duplicator. And some of the stuff that he brings in into the verse is thoroughly entertaining. And it's, it's always good fun watching his videos and seeing exactly how he's managed to exploit something inside of the game. The guy's a freaking genius. So, yeah, go check out Professor Cynical. He's, he, <laughs> he's a brilliant character as well he really is yeah he's just had twins as well people yeah <laughs> duplicated in real life as well so yeah proper glitch master anyhow so yeah some people don't like that 15 percent of people here they said that they don't enjoy that but four percent of the community again this list is twice as big as this list and four percent of people just love finding exploits and shortcuts that's what they like doing inside of no man's sky so take that away, and that's 4% of the people that voted that no longer have the thing that they enjoy the most. So this is what I'm trying to get from these two polls, is although that you might like something massively and enjoy it massively, there's another portion of the gaming community that despise it, <laughs> okay? But that's the beauty of No Man's Sky. You play it how you want to play it. It's like this new god mode that I really didn't like when it first dropped in Waypoint. I was like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. This takes away from the game and the enjoyment. Blah, blah, blah. And I got on a high horse. I have to admit, I, I was I was pretty done. Freaking frustrated with that one. I thought it may be that they, they should have given it as an end game perk. Part of me still thinks it would be better as an end game perk. But at the same time, after I started my relax mode and saw just how you could use it to cut cut out swathes of stuff that you probably wouldn't want to do and you just want to get focused into the exploration it's like the base building parts you know i'm not a massive i mean i do like building bases but it's not what i go to no man's sky to do as the sole thing i like doing adventures i, I like the speculation and ideas and stuff and, you know having to go dig up half a planet is going to take away from my time doing the things that i do enjoy but now i can just toggle that thing get all my base parts lovely jubbly away i go you know or it's like if I want to rebuild my freighter base, I can now just go down to the center console, hit reset, lose all the base parts, not give a dang, put it into creative mode and use as many base parts as I like and then put it back into the game mode that I was in prior. So I actually see a use for it now, you know, but I didn't at the, at, 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 at the start. But there's people out there that probably thought this is brilliant right from the start because they could see where it made sense. I couldn't at the start. So yeah, sorry for my little mini tangents and sort of like, rants if you like i mean i wouldn't say that i went as far as completely going off my trolley but I, I was a bit miffed i was a bit miffed in the sense of direction for a while but anyways yeah so why i'm touching on rant videos and super, ne super negative reviews of updates that one on this list of things that are bad rung out up to 59 percent so, you know, that is the most damaging thing that's out there. It's not speculation, it's not even data mining or duplication. It's a bad and negative reviews of updates and expeditions. So these people that sound off and maybe give it one out of 10 and things like that without giving any sort of sense of criticism or feedback or, or anything like that. Yeah, this is the worst thing ever. Boom, done. You know, we saw a lot of that when No Man's Sky first released. It's like the Angry Joe review. And he, you've gone and effed it up, you know. That was that rings out in my head when I'm thinking of rant videos and super, super negative reviews. I mean, Angry Joe hasn't come back and done another review since, and I really hope he does at some stage, because yes, Angry Joe has got a massive swathe of the you know the Tinterwebs population and swathe, and people still now remember Angry Joe's review of No Man's Sky, and I really feel he should give it another chance um, and come back and just give it a re-review. I mean, if I, I've, I've tried searching, I can't find another review by him. But yeah, if he has done one on another platform other than YouTube, please let me know. But anyhow, there, there have been other reviewers to review No Man's Sky inside of the community that I've been pointed to to say, look at this review from this guy. He's really freaking jumped on the hate train. And then a couple of weeks later, he's doing lovely videos again of No Man's Sky and, and singing his praises. And I can kind of see where they're coming from when it comes across to there. But at the same time, I can also see some truth with inside of those reviews. I mean, in some of the reviews that I've done, I mean, yes, some of the expeditions and even some of the updates like Waypoint, I scored the Waypoint on release quite low. I scored it, I think, about 6, 6 6.8 out of 10 or something like that. And then adjusted it after it got all of its patches to something like 7.8. So, 
yeah i can see where they came from but then again those people that reviewed like waypoint or or other sorts of updates like say the foundation no, no, no the settlements one frontiers they gave it like a two or a one out of ten it's like really <laughs> you know they've just put in procedural freaking towns yes it could have been implemented a bit better and yes you could have given some more critical feedback but to give it like a zero out of ten or a two out of ten or something crazy is a little bit insane when it's a free update that's delivered in so much information so i can see where people are saying that there's there's persons out there inside of the community that are doing no man's sky no favors and it's rant videos and super negative reviews that sort of detract from the actual community and do the most damage so yeah funny enough some of these content creators that are doing some of these negative reviews are the people that are also saying no speculation is what's killing the game speculation and overhype is killing the game and they've seen it kill many other games in the past which is a little bit i don't know i don't know how they can come to that conclusion especially when speculation and ideas videos usually is what sort of feeds into another update coming out into the verse but yeah and hello games actually ask for feedback on, on and ideas with inside of their zendesk so yeah and speculation is often what fuels ideas so i don't know i don't know where they get that idea from but then again there's another 13 percent of people that do agree here that speculation and overhype videos without logical reason and foundation to them damage the community now i like to hope that my speculation is based off of the law that's inside of game it's like i've wanted laylapse your own drone as a pet for some time and we've finally got that i've always said that in the realm of glass it'd be nice if we could actually go there at some point and considering that ariadne has been kidnapped and we've now got a doppelganger inside of the atlas i mean not the atlas it's the, the uh, nexus I would love to be able to go and rescue the real Ariadne, you know, I would love to see that actualized. I would like to see lore actualized into the game, is what I'm saying. And we've seen instances of that happen recently, so I don't think it's too far removed from actually speculating that it might come into the verse at some stage. And I know that I've been banging that drum for some time, but even the content creators that are saying that speculation is bad, I mean, I've seen that they've done videos that say, you know, top 10 times that speculation speculation's been wrong <laughs> and one of those is the realm of glass or the void inside of their 10 list and it's like well okay but then you look at their videos and their back catalog and you can see that they've done speculation videos themselves even though they said oh i don't do speculation this is why i don't do speculation then they've got some speculation videos in their back catalog and you watch them and they're completely wrong <laughs> Okay, then, mate. Fine. But yes. So anyway, I've done these polls mainly to see what people enjoy doing inside of the verse and also where, you know, the people don't like to see things. Now, I don't know what to do when it comes to my own speculation. I enjoy doing it the most. I'm, I'm over in this camp over here, but to see that some people don't like it at all. I mean, I, I have always made it so you know, people can tell which of my videos are speculation and which ones aren't because I know that it's not for everyone but I have noticed that my speculation videos do get quite a peak in views so I do enjoy doing them I mean it's one of the things that I enjoy doing the most and considering that Hello Games and Sean Murray puts out a singular emoji for people to speculate on and they've actually commented to say here comes the hype train and they kind of like that it helps them with their marketing it helps fuel maybe future updates in ideas although we might speculate and go off into the clouds some of those ideas that are in the clouds get pulled down and put into the freaking game so you know it does happen from time to time like the ability to raid a sentinel pillar turn off sentinel activity that sort of stuff has all been speculation in the past and now it's realized an actuality so you know i like to think that it does fuel future ideas but I, it does upset me that i could be upsetting some of the community even though it's something that i enjoy doing the most it's a tricky one to get the balance right anyway let's jump on over and re read some of the comments inside of the verse and see what's going on shall we so let's um let's have a quick look see so where shall we start? Shall we start on the positives and end on the negatives? No, let's bring up the negatives first. So we end on a positive. There's a thing called a shite sandwich where you have 
you have a, you know your bread and your filling but you want to have good bad and then good so i want to i've just started on something good put a little bit bad in the middle and then end on something good so yeah that's probably the best way to do it so here you go what do you feel harms the community of no man's sky so here we go we've got 20 comments on here people so 20 comments i'm probably not going to read all of them i'm just going to read through some of them so here we go I voted for the negative reviews thing, not because I think No Man's Sky should be above criticism. Good opening line. Yeah, I totally agree. But mostly because the criticism if No Man's Sky falls into the same category that a lot of modern media criticism falls into, namely people not liking something, and then finding ways to justify their subjective experience using objective language. People not liking something is fine, but people not liking something then claiming that it's objectively bad is a huge problem in modern media criticism. And honestly, with criticism as a whole, going back many years, No Man's Sky is still especially vulnerable to that because of overhyped falsehoods surrounding its launch. Now, I think that ties into what I was saying about, you know, the likes of, say, Angry Joe. I, I love Angry Joe. I love all of his reviews and I often agree with his reviews, but I was actually enjoying and liking No Man's Sky launch and I watched his review and I was like, man, this is going to put off a lot of my friends and a lot of people inside of, you know, picking up this game. And uh, yeah, I, I thought that was a little bit scathing, to be honest. Someone tried to tell me it was objective and shallow gameplay loop, but I couldn't articulate to me how describing how it made them feel, meaning they were assuming feelings were the correct ways to feel about No Man's Sky. I had the same thing with my friend's circle after they saw the launch reviews and feedback from some of the top content creators at the time. I mean, I wasn't doing content creation back then at launch. I didn't pick up No Man's Sky's content creation until next, in all fairness. In fairness, I never noticed you do that often. I really like No Man's Sky YouTube community because you all seem to understand how unique each individual player's experience can be. I think I've covered that off inside of these poll results, haven't I? And, and what I was just talking about before, that everybody has got their little pocket of what they like doing. Some people love to do the duplication stuff. Some people love to do speculation and ideas videos. Just me, <laughs> not just me, multiple people out there, you know, but I do ignore any videos that are titled in the update ruined no man's sky or similar. I'm still frustrated by having rearranged all my tech across my ship and save files and waypoint. No Man's Sky has ever been subjective in experience in any way. And while folks have their own experience, I do roll my eyes extremely hard whenever someone starts trying to tell me why my feelings and personal experiences are wrong. That's something that I, I hope I would never do. I think everybody should be able to draw their own conclusions around No Man's Sky and whether they think they like it or love it or whatever. Yeah, update ruin No Man's Sky. Uh, what did I title mine as? Let's just have a quick jump in. Let's have a look at what videos come up. Okay, so we've got here. Has Waypoint affected my overall review of No Man's Sky? And I didn't put in here anything like that anyway. And uh, yes, it has. Subjectively, it has. It has, re it has lowered it slightly. Let's have a quick look down. Review of Waypoint, what the fudge? Yep. And uh, I was talking mainly of the bugs and features. So I don't, I don't think that's overly critical in a roundabout way. Because this one here, that, that one could be considered, I suppose, because it says worst update yet, 2 out of 10, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's, that's probably the sort of thing that I was alluding to as well, to be fair. I'm not seeing many others that have put out... No, I'm not seeing any other real reviews there that have, have been scathing overly, you know? Not in the title, not in the actual thumbnail, only that one, so... Maybe, I mean, yeah, I did see a couple, but yeah, that's, that's, is there a way to show more? There's no show more button here, you know, you'd think there was, yeah, it just goes on to people, then people watched. It'd be nice to see more results with inside of that same few, that same sort of thing. But there we go. Anyhow, there we go. That's, that's pretty much that comment covered off. Claude B, so many people are staying with the initial impressions of the game at launch while it's a different game now that's so enjoyable. We need more positive feedback to the efforts of Hello Games. Well, Claude B, I have seen a lot of large content creators been hit up by Hello Games now to do a review. So if I put in No Man's Sky hashtag, 
an ad okay because that's what they ask um actual gamers to do when they're actually being sponsored and if i do say like i know this month because they're still sponsoring people that have got an ad in there or at least they were doing a few a little while ago uh, da -dum -dum -dum. okay let's go let's go back to all time i don't know why it's not put, picked that up so this year let's go for this year all right cool so this should be people that were hit up for yeah look there's the ad beeble bum he's been hit up for doing the ad we've got um kanaju kanaju's really good yeah he, he's fairly new i think to the no man's sky community when i say fairly new like a year or so but he's climbing in in views and subscribers very quickly kanaju i'm really liking your content kanaju i am it's bloody good okay so let's uh, carry on down and um yeah let's see if there's a couple of other there's one here for an ad and that's had 290 views i don't know who aki is and aki i think covers lots of games so this is one that i'm on about so let's just hit him up because this is this is one that I, I, I'm, I'm on about here so let's go into aki for a second and we'll see what sort of other sort of content that aki does like subnautica all that sort of stuff 11k views they've got 217,000 subscribers so i think that's even more than is that more than craze gaming but yes they've they've just been given a sponsor hey and their there, video I'm coverage was really quite cool the... when it comes to no man's sky content <laughs> he's got a crab coming out of his face what's that all about oh i think that's the thing from subnautica isn't it pretty darn cool oh yeah he's got the tail as well pretty awesome so i think he likens it to subnautica in a roundabout way i don't know where he predominantly covers um subnautica but that's one guy and when you carry on down here, let's have a look what else we've got. Is there any other ads in there? They do ask you to put it in your title. There's one here, Jason Plays. Yeah, we all know Jason. But there's other people outside of our little niche community. Hero2, he's got an ad. He's done 1.9k. Again, Hero2, another new content creator, really, within like the last year or so, for No Man's Sky. I strongly recommend Hero2. He's awesome as well. Check him out. So scrolling down, is there any others that have been given like hashtag ad? Here's one here, 3.9k, and I don't know who CEEG is, but yeah, very cool. Got an ad though, pretty darn sweet. There has been some really big ones. There's been some real big ones. Uh, Zane, we all know Zane though, and oh, Survival Bobs. He nearly made me freaking cry watching that video. If you haven't watched that one, watching that one, get get your box of tissues ready, people. You're gonna have a lump in your throat. But yeah, what I'm trying to say is Hello Games have gone outside of the realms of the normal content creators that you're probably used to. And um, yeah, a lot of other people have been picking it up. I mean, this this is a good one as well. And that's had over 200, 207k views. Excellent, eh? Just comparing where it was, you know? So yeah, yeah there's a lot, of, a lot of reviews out there, people, that have, have been approached by No Man's Sky recently to help sort of promote the um, this year's sort of updates. Anyhow, we've got Talo Marrow. The one thing you didn't mention is a lack of decent photo director mode for filming content along with easier way to use emotes while filming. Well, this is what I think harms the community from content creation. So I don't think you've fully grasped the um, idea here of, of what I was trying to accomplish. So that's why I didn't put photography or director mode in there. But I do fully agree with you. I would love to have the ability to film footage as if I was in multiplayer. You know how things still move and things like cinematic mode. I know you can get PC mods, but I would like that as a toggle in the settings. So I am with you on that, but that's 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 why it wasn't in there because that's not what I was going for. If I was going for things that I like to see added in 2033 or 2023, that would probably be one of them. Like like as i don't know quality of life improvement okay to me the most harm comes from a mix of super negative reviews and wild speculation not you specifically since you always try and keep things positive and constructive but the experimental branch difficulty shaming speculation and misinformation from reddit was a bit much the best response to that was when a handful of content creators decided to install and stream experimental so, so everybody could see the potential changes and draw their own conclusions the game is constantly evolving so hello games is bound to do things not everyone likes and that's fine that's what constructive feedback is for and that's very different to blasting the devs with hate now over on that ex experimental branch life of um a cpre that it did change very very quickly there was experimental branch update after experimental update 
so firstly it came up with a, a, a blurb of text like how often you had changed or, or what you had done inside of game like um yeah and when you had exploited things and then it changed to just being a red star on people um for some reason and then it changed to a yellow star on people if you change your game setting and then it changed to a padlock if you had locked your game setting and that came from experimental branch feedback so what you saw on reddit might have been a glimpse of how it was at a set point in time and then it changed and changed and changed again it was so freaking rapid by the time i managed to work out how to get onto experimental branch it had already changed to be in a yellow star thing but yes um beeble bum he'd done some awesome coverage of the changes from the red star to the yellow star but before before that all we had was screenshots to go from from some of the people over Exper steam experimental i've got steam experimental in installed now on my pc version and i'm i will be sure to try and jump in earlier when there's anything that comes up that might be triggering things over on reddit so i can cover it better um, but yes, I wasn't off the starting blocks on that one right at the start there. But yes, I, I always try to not do wild speculation. The speculation I tend to do is usually based on law or it's based on my own hopes and dreams and gut feeling. And I usually put that across inside of the video and say, you know, don't set this as expectation because this is what I would love to see. But it's probably not going to happen, you know. Anyway, the fluffy mofo, duping and exploits is my trigger. Some content creators will be like just shedding light on the problem, but we all know it's just for views. Imagine a game that actually pulled off zero exploits in it. I'm sure that what most gamers dream of. You know what? I would say the vast majority of Switch games or games made by Nintendo. The games made by Nintendo, they like to put in cheats or, or things inside games where you trigger it by putting in a button combination or holding down things or doing something. Nintendo is very good at getting rid of bugs and exploits, really, aren't they? You know, it's like the Mario Brothers games where you have to duck on a cube and then you can run behind the background or you can go up on the roof and run around, but then you find a pipe that takes you to another area. They put these things in game purposely as little exploits and things. I love the way Nintendo puts things into games as triggers and exploits because they look like they've been designed and placed in on purpose. You don't see that done by a lot of the other games companies like the EAs of the world or, or even, um, well, even the Hello Games of the world. You know, they, they left in some sort of dev mode inside of um, The Last Campfire. You could hold down all the shoulder keys and press start and select at the same time or something. And it brought up a dev menu where you could actually jump levels. I don't think they meant to leave that in. I think they patched it. But yes, yeah, so that, that was there at launch. That was a bit of an oddity. But um, KWJJ, speculation one don't really interest me that much. I'd rather learn or see what's actually happening now, what, what might not ever happen, which is a fair comment. And a lot of people out there inside the verse when it comes to content recreation will wait until they see the emoji or they will wait until there's been some game files that have been left in purposely or accidentally, and then they would do their speculation off of those. I like to do speculation off of lore changes. So when Hello Games put in a new sort of branch of lore, or we see something inside the the, um, the archives, or even at our settlements, because we've had visitors come to our settlements that mention, and it comes up in a different coloured text normally, and sometimes there's a couple of words that are missing, or it's got the gzzt stuff in there, but they talk about don't drink the water, or coming out of a realm of void, uh, like a void realm, or emerging from a black hole. There's some very juicy stuff introduced inside of the settlements update where it comes to lore that i've speculated off of because it does kind of give subtle hints it's like the pirate stations you go to the core at the back there and it comes up glass 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 well why why does it do that because you know we know that the sentinels are emerging from this realm of glass but does that mean that we're getting closer to the realm of glass through the outlaw stations you know there's a lot and also we've got the station overrides that we could be using inside of normal space you know i've speculated well what happens if you do the station over right could it blow up the core and end up causing it to become an outlaw station is that something that's going to happen in future or does the station take us into the realm of glass and that's why all the ones that are knackered now say glass 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 because it's the last thing it freaking remembers <laughs> you know there's... so i like to speculate off of what we see inside the game files and inside of the lore rather than just grabbing something out of thin air and saying oh yeah and no man's sky is going to have skating rinks soon we're going to be able to have little ice skates and go skating yeah, no, I've never done that, but, you know, 
There's wild speculation and there's speculation based on stuff that you see inside of the lore or inside of the game files, you know? Anyway, cool. Eagle Eye, I tried watching videos where folks are ge guessing about what will happen. Oh, I, I get tired of, not tried, sorry. Yeah, I suppose so. But um, at the same time, I love I love watching those because we've got an infinite universe with infinite possibilities and Hello Games are the weavers of dreams. They've put stuff inside of the game that we could never have guessed, like the living ships and the leviathans. But there were some people that were saying that they would love that sort of thing because they used to watch Farscape and they would love to have a living ship or even like the flight of the navigator, you know, which is technically a living ship. So there's always been people out there saying, I'd like to have living ships. I wasn't one of those, you know, and there was people that done videos saying, I'd love to see an organic living ship and they got it, you know. So, yeah, it, I would say it never discounts something that's out there in the verse because it could come into iteration. PC version is very differented than console versions. PC is allowed to mod consoles, not. I I, I'm, I can't actually read that sentence correctly. I, I'm just... I'm a, PC version is very different than console versions. PC is allowed to mod, consoles not. Okay, now I get it. <laughs> sorry, Pat. Sorry there. Um, Bajad, I can't read your name. <laughs> I just say Bertie. <laughs> Sorry, Bertie. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. It would be nice if um, some of these mods that are on PC, the really cool ones, I really would like it if um, Hello Games could get those mods and put them on the different universes. So as you jump through systems, you enter into a different modded area of space in a roundabout way. So at least systems feel a bit different as you're going through. And I think that could improve the gameplay loop. And you would want to push on and see what's in the next universe because it could have it could have exactly what you want in there especially if it was like the radmus mod or ray rods mods or whatever that'd be really cool wouldn't it speculation over hype and no man's sky never a thing i voted for ranting loonies <laughs> biggest possible red flag turn off okay cool i don't think i fall into that camp but yeah, they really like the they like the speculation and overhype. They don't think that's a thing. And I don't think it is either because it's so encouraged by Hello Games with the whole... They like the hype train. They've actually put it out on Sean Murray's Twitter feed. Hype train engaged. And then they put the emoji out and they know that we go mental and they love the fact that that trends. They like the speculation and hype. It It's kind of... It was a bit of a double-edged sword at, at the start, the hype, but that the overhype was actually caused by Hello Games originally, wasn't it, with the E3 trailer and stuff, and then what got launched? You know, that that, that was kind of, yeah. But now they kind of like it, because it, it draws in people, and it they thrive on it. So, yeah, I, I kind of... There is the thing of the hype train and then onto the hate train. There are some content creators that have fallen into that category in the past, or at least been, you know, they've pointed at those content creators to say, you know, you hype it up and then when you don't get what you want, you go back onto the hate trail. I don't think I've ever gone as far into, into that sort of realm. At least I hope I haven't. You know, sometimes, yeah, I, I, the wind might come out of myself, but you, you've, you've seen that by the vast majority of updates I've been excited for, and after they've landed, I'm still excited afterwards, and I'm loving them. The only one where that hasn't happened for me was Waypoint. But I think Hello Games done a really good job of Way, on Waypoint. They put it all into check. They could see that the hype was building and building, but then they, they sort of said no. <laughs> no, <laughs> Waypoint isn't a four, isn't like 3.0 or 2.0. Waypoint is very different. It's it's for the Switch. All you're getting is the Switch stuff, and they've done that probably in re, in in advance, in good time. I think Hello Games did a good job. I think of keeping people's expectations in check. And as soon as they did what they did, you know, the videos that I started putting out then was this is just for the Switch. It's it's not going to be massive, you know. So I think. I think I kept my expectations in check, but not only that, but um, also maybe the community in the videos that I was doing. If you look at my videos on the lead up to Waypoint, at first I was very excited because it was 4.0, it was a marked update, but then, yeah, I adjusted and sort of brought things back into perspective. People who ignore negative feedback and then say you hate it because you have criticism. Okie dokie, um, I haven't come across that one. No, 
No, but anyhow, let's carry on. I'm very surprised with 58% response to rant videos. Nothing good ever comes from those. Oh, no. I, oh, I think you've read it round the wrong way. Because <laughs> I've done a couple of polls. Yeah, I, this is the bad one. Yeah. So, Eugene Carr, I think you actually hit me up on a DM. You did, didn't you? A personal message. And I explained, yeah, I think you got it round the wrong way. Experimental branch just updated. I guess it did. In fact, the update is out today, people. Today is the 23rd of November. And yes, you can download the update now. It doesn't do much because it's the expedition expeditions they're just sort of sitting there ready to rock and roll and i think either tim tim woolley or um sean murray of, of hello games has tweeted out a news article to state that they're going to start on thursday but uh, yeah uh, so a little bit later on this week i think okay uh yeah i think it was thursday okay so J Rule didn't vote the only thing that can hurt the community is the thing that you're allowed to hurt it when it's the last last update comes, nobody lost their mind and forgot that what Hello Games did in the previous six years. Either be it for them to kick rock us lifers, really don't care what you do, they're blessed. Oh, okay, nice one. Well, thank you. That's a very good way of looking at it, to be honest, isn't it? Just do what you want to do. There's nothing that can really hurt the community unless you let it hurt the community or if you let it hurt you. That's, that's a very good point, to be honest. I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion. So even if somebody does want to go and give Waypoint 2 out of 10 or whatever, but then the next day they're back to doing ship hunting or doing whatever they want to do inside of the verse, they're still liking the game. They're still liking what's out there and been given. It's just that that one update for them is a 2 out of 10 or whatever, you know, or a 0 out of 10 or a minus something. Yeah, I did see some reviews. I mean, when I did that search earlier, the only one that came up there was Elite Games. But, but if I would have scrolled down further, I'm, which I couldn't, which I showed you, I'm sure I saw some that actually gave it a minus something out of 10. <laughs> which is crazy. So, yeah. Negative rants with inaccurate speculation over hype come in close to second. Let me explain. Okay, cool. Go for it. Lord of the Apes. Duping mods, save editors, etc. Don't, ex don't affect other people's games. Very good point. In fact, some of them change things in ways that end up limiting your ability to play the game, such as adding planets that don't exist in the real universe, so you can't upload them or claim them or credit a given finder. I didn't know you could add new planets with mods. That's interesting. Over-speculation, on the other hand, often gets people excited for things that are more easily said than done for Hello Games. That's a good way of thinking about it. People often forget that they're still an indie studio and develop unrealistic expectations. Hmm. Well, although they're an indie studio, they have grown massively. And let's face it, I I didn't think that they'd be able to bring it to Nintendo Switch. Now, there's a guy called um, Legacy Zero. He said, oh, one day, I bet they get this on Switch. He was right. I, I actually said to him, no, I don't think that's ever going to happen. But he speculated that it would, and it did. So, you know, sometimes, I mean, he was excited for it a year in advance, bless him. Okay, this most recent patch is clear example of the damage these negative rants can do. I mean, Hello Games could have moderated it by telling us about the supercharged slots before the patch came out. But I don't know whether Hello Games were even going to put in the supercharged slots. I think that was more of a response or a knee-jerk reaction from some of the, the reviews that were happening over on Steam. If you didn't look at the Steam reviews, there, a lot of them were about technology and how they're, they're no longer awesome, as awesome as they were before. And, you know, they, there was a, There's a group of people called mid-maxers that just want to try and get everything out of their stats. I didn't put that in my list of things, of good things, did I? Dang it! Um, but yeah, they implemented it so fast and effectively that it was a clear plan. I don't think it was. I, 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 I've... I think that was a knee-jerk reaction. I honestly do. I don't. I don't think they had it planned, or else they would have put it inside of their patch notes or something beforehand, or or said something about it beforehand or on on experimental. I think that was a knee-jerk reaction. Hello Games doesn't have features like that come out bug-free like they did that quickly without planning it. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I disagree. I have absolutely zero doubt that they wanted to make sure the new inventory system was working right before adding those slots. Well, it wasn't just the slots that they added. They added in the filters so you could see technology or general. And that was also 
in the reviews over on Steam as being a negative. Why have you done this? Why have you made it so I have to scroll? This is horrible. I don't like the new UI. There was a lot of people that were putting in their negative reviews that they hated the new UI. They didn't like the scroll feature. A lot of content creators, including myself, I didn't like the scroll feature. I'm forever using those toggles and I really wish it remembers when you've hit it. So it locks it. So, you know, it, you don't have to keep doing it every time you go in, especially now that my controller, as I'm going across all the icons, now slows down over the icons it takes you bloody ages to get there so you might as well scroll you know i would like it to have the d i like a default setting to have it as expanded i personally don't like the ui the ui still you know yet a bunch of newer players and content creators claimed cr credit after throwing giant temperature trampolines because they were instantly evap evaporating every single sentinel they looked at um well a lot of people that can evaporate sentinels um, are were the mid maxers they they actually went out and found s class modules or re-rolled pirate modules over and over again or sentinel modules over and over again until they got the numbers that they wanted which are through the freaking charts some of these some of the multi tools that they've managed to upgrade to the point that they could melt those sentinels they put in a lot of work to get to that stage and then to have that all removed you're talking hours if not months of gameplay to get those modules and yes now that they can they can only choose three of them but before they had six they were twice as powerful as they were before you've got to look at it from other people's perspective and i had these people in my comments hitting me up saying i can no longer play the game that they've come they've wiped billions of hours off of play not billions i'm over exaggerating but you get the idea it really upset a lot of people. You've only got to go over to the Steam reviews and see those. Now, I actually put the Steam reviews in my review of Waypoint. So if you want a little mini synopsis of what was happening on Steam at that time, check out my Waypoint reviews. I've done two of them, one before the updates and one after the updates. Check them both out. I can't remember which one's got the Steam reviews in there. But if you watch those back to back, you'll see how my opinion on launch was and then how I changed when I got when all the patches come out. And I think, hopefully, that's how a bulk of the people that watch my channel probably feel. I'd like to hope, anyway. Wow, people would rather have wild speculation than honest opinion. Colour me surprised. It says Iron Vicro. Okay. Um, honest opinion. What, the rant videos and negative reviews? Yeah, I suppose there's ways of doing um, rant videos or negative reviews if you do it in a constructive manner and say okay well this is what's happening at the moment and I really hope that they manage to fix it by maybe doing XYZ I, if I'm pointing out a problem with something I always like to present a solution it's the ones where you get a negative problem that doesn't give any sort of sense of um, you know solution so yeah I, I kind of I, I don't know Anyhow, let's go back to the positives. Let's scroll on up and let's have a look at the other poll quickly. Okay, it's a community. Let's scroll on down. Billy B. Right. Okay, so here we go. Let's go into here then. Number four. Uh, there's only four in here. So here we are. So I think memories of what happened last time. Oh no, that's the wrong poll. This is the other. That's the poll that I've done about the new releasey thing. So it's down here. Out of all the below, what do you like the most? So let's go into here. Let's have a look at under here. There might be something that I've missed. Base building and ideas sound okay. I've always been keen to pick up new ideas. Just walking past something and going, wow, isn't enough. I need to know the impressive stuff is, is made so I can play with those ideas later. Needs depth. Uh, needs depth. Duping and exploits, not very interesting. Unless newsworthy. Plenty of others to cover already. Modding and save editing and PC and console players. Yeah, hunting for cool stuff, locations. I think a lot of the actual comments that I've been getting here has been around... Okay, I, I can't just pick one. I've got to pick a few. Um, but here we go. I love your content, no matter what subject you choose. But in gameplay, I've never been a lot more focused on base building and freighter base building. But in my gameplay, I've been a lot more focused. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I, I have enjoyed redoing my freighter base. I have. And I've done it a couple of times now. And I I just love the fact that it's mobile. It goes wherever you go. And, you know, 
with bases that you put on planets, if you put the coordinates out, you're going to get a neighbor. And you might get somebody actually build right next to your freaking base. I've had that happen a few times now. And it can be a little bit frustrating because as you land in it, it, it gives like frame rate drops. So if I then want to do a video there and I've got to worry that somebody might jump in while I'm actually making my video and I lose frame rates, I'm forever building new bases. But now I can just do that on my freighter and hit up little terminals and all that sort of stuff. Happy as Larry. Pretty darn nice. So yeah. I love base building videos and ship hunting, but I also enjoy mining tips and nanite farm tips. Okay, fair enough. I haven't got many nanite farms. I've got a runaway mold farm that gives you nanites, and I've also got a droid farm that gives you nanite, nanites. The only thing is with the droid farms, or any any pet farm, any fauna farm, so this is something that I'd love to see come into the verse at some stage, is the ability to have pet pens, and you put like animals in them, and they're always there, and they're creating stuff ambiently. Because if you go away from a planet right now, even if you've got the creature spawners and the feeders there to give the feed them automatically and auto harvest them as soon as you go away from there and the creatures despawn all those machines stop doing stuff <laughs> you have to be there and watch them or else it just shuts down it needs to be more like how we've got like farms like you know the plants that grow over time and then you can go and harvest them again it'd be nice if creatures and the f the f and the feeders whether it registered how many creatures were there and how much you were turning over maybe you have to watch it for three minutes so it gets its stats and it gets its data but then it would be nice if it continued harvesting while you're gone so you go back there and you can get all the milk and you can get all the mushrooms because technically it should be there but it's not it kind of breaks that level of immersion cool i always love the speculation cap in your videos well thanks james nc awesome I like to see all of it, Captain. Guess I vote for all the categories. So here we go. A lot of people are giving me some really positive feedback. Okay, but then you do get the odd comment. They killed the game off for me. Um, I'd always go back every update. But after this one, what's the point? Just flick a switch and get the stuff. The game's dead for me. And there's three people that like that and actually put a reply on there. Don't flick the switch. <laughs> yeah, that's the simple way, isn't it? Or you lock your gameplay so you can't flick that switch if you're too tempted. But it's the, I guess it's the, the thinking that other people might be and it sort of subtracts something from your own area of play. Now, I did get a lot of, if you look at the Steam reviews, there's a lot of people that say exactly the same thing as George. He's not alone. So, yeah, it was one of those things. But for me, I'm thinking, when you look at these polls, okay, there's something for everyone in No Man's Sky. So, it's very hard for Hello Games to implement something that's going to please everyone. And I think they took a massive gamble with this Switch because it has switched people off, you know, like George. But then people on Switch, the Nintendo Switch, we've said Switch quite a lot, they've got a battery to think about on the play. So they might want to switch to game mode for a second just to finish making their base, quickly upload it and swap the game mode back. You know, that, they might have done it for many reasons. They might have done it for a future reason. They might want to add in more of a challenge, but they're worried to add in that challenge because it might put people off because they're saying this should never be PvE or PvP even. But now with that switch, you've got so much more control. If you want to still see some mega faunas or, you know, like the giant worms coming over, maybe they might make it so we can do combat with them. And maybe they're worried that some people just don't want that. So they've left the switch in so you can change your game mode. If you go into a big planet with massive fauna on, you know, you can you can remove that sort of risk. So I'm wondering whether it might be for your future update, especially especially since they called this waypoint. You know, a waypoint is usually a marker on a, on a destination to somewhere else. So, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's what it's all about. Who knows? But only time will tell on that one, really. Sweet. My reason for playing the, the game keeps changing as I learn more. For a while, it, it it isn't for the discovery, then photography, then other people's bases, then glitching. Now I'm building my own stuff and hunting for Earth-like crashed exotics. Nice. Cool. Other people find joy in diverse areas of the game. Pet breeding, weekend group, quicksilver runs, black hole hunting. Whatever you do, I hope you find something fulfilling to play which is a real nice sentiment. And that's kind of what I've been echoing inside of these polls. In fact, this is probably a real nice comment to end off on, is the fact that this, this community that we were part of, at first, it was a solo game. It was a solo game and a solo experience. There was no base building. There was no exocrafts. <laughs> it was just walking around on planets, mining materials so you could go to your next planet. That's what No Man's Sky was when it first came out. Is that what Hello Games envisaged for life? 
Probably not, because even their trailers showed a little bit more than that. But then there's been so much more added in. It's not quite the same game that we started out with by any stretch of the imagination. And now this community, it welcomes so many people into its arms. We've got the base builders. We've got the people that like to hunt for ships. We've got the people that like to hunt for multi-tools. Uh, we've got we've got people that like to duplicate and find exploits. I mean, these poll results show that, don't they? You know, the, these poll results are so interesting when you look at them and how the, the actual community like to spend their time. I mean, there's a couple that jump out. It's like ship, multi-tool and freighter and pet hunting. 36% of the community like doing that. The odd thing is, though, if I put out a video on pets or freighters or multi-tools or ships, yes, they get some views, but the, the ones that get a lot of views for me is the speculation and ideas videos. Now, I think the reason why my speculation and ideas videos get the most views is because that's what I'm most passionate about. And I put a lot of a lot of creativity into those. I'm always making mock-ups and images of what I would like to see so I can really get the point over to Hello Games and the con and, and, and the concept, you know? Whereas, you know, some people, they might do a speculation video and in the background, they've got the trailer up or something and it's just them talking to camera quickly and they're not putting much energy or, or anything into their idea. And it just feels, well, I could have just read that and got the same feeling from that. So I think, I think it's how much passion you've got for that thing. You know, it's like if you watch Beeblebum and his base building, it's like you can tell he's passionate about it he freaking loves base building and people gravitate towards him for his base building which i thoroughly get and it's like professor cynical that i touched on earlier he makes it joyous to watch his videos it's so freaking funny and i love the way he starts every one of his videos like today i was casually washing some apples and i thought of this or <laughs> it's usually a little bit more adult and blue than washing some apples but you get the general idea i really like professor cynical and how he puts across his duplication ideas and you know he always inside of his comments or inside of his video description says if this is not for you or warning or whatever i think he's quite good with how he puts it into the verse but then other people they might just not even warn that it's a duplication video and say this is how you can get an infinite supply of nanites you click on it thinking it's going to be legit and no it completely shatters that whole thing and it's a duplication video and you think well, you could have bloody warned us, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, um, I think if, if you know, if you put something in your title that it's a duplication video and you know that's what it is before you click it, all good. You're not going to ruin someone's experience, you know? And it's the same with, like, um, it's like the same with, say, say that Elite Gamers review that we saw earlier. It's quite clear by his fun now that he hasn't got something that good to say about it. He's giving it a freaking 2 out of 10. So, you know, if you want, if if you're feeling negative about it, you might go and watch that video just to say, OK, well, at least someone's feeling the same way as I am right now. And you might get some sort of, you know, cohesion there with elite gamers. And maybe you can comment and you can talk to them and, and stuff about why you feel negatively about it, which is cool. So if you don't like the look of a thumbnail, don't click the video, I think, is, is the um, is the sort of thing with that, isn't it? You know, if, if you want to watch a negative review of No Man's Sky and you're feeling negative yourself, go watch that. Or if you're feeling negative about an update that's dropped and you want a more positive spin, click on a different thumbnail, you know, and it, you've got choice at the end of the day. So that, I think that's what I can discern from all of this is the community is very diverse. We've got to respect each other's feelings around what people have got to say and opinions. And if you don't like the look of something, buy the thumbnail. Don't click it if you think it might upset you. It is kind of where I'm going with this. Um, but at the same time, it is interesting. There's a lot of data here for me to mull over to think of where do I focus my content. But at the same time, I'm also thinking I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm passionate passionate about and if I am upsetting a small portion of the community with maybe doing speculation and ideas videos I just need to make that clear by the thumbnail so they know not to click on it which I think I'm already doing to a, a to a de good good degree I don't think I do very clickbaity thumbnails I think I'm very honest with my titles and my thumbnails at least I hope I am I do try to think is this clickbaity or not and sometimes I've toned down my thumbnails for fear of being you know clickbaity but there we go people in the view of us i hope you've enjoyed this video it's gone on for a heck of a long time but um i always try to give a balanced and fair and honest sort of rundown of things whenever i'm putting something across 
And I always try to think, well, is this going to help Hello Games if they see it as well? So even when I'm doing my speculation and ideas videos, I, I am putting a bit of extra drive in there and passion because I'm thinking if this ever gets aired inside of a Hello Games boardroom meeting, will they like my idea? So I go and put a little bit of extra effort and polish and shine to my speculation and ideas videos because you never know who's watching or listening because Hello Games say we're always watching and we're always listening to the community. Heck, they're up for a community award. Let's hope that they win that award in December. If you haven't already voted, it's quite easy to vote. I've already done it. You can sign in quite easy and you can do the voting. There's quite a lot to vote for, but you can just skip to the Hello Games one and the community one and just vote there if you really want to. But yes, I really do hope that they walk away with something this year because they are freaking awesome and they do listen. And they did make those changes in the experimental with that whole star system and things. And I feel that the people that were on experiment and giving the feedback it's probably thanks to them more so than anyone so thank you very much the steam experimental community heck yes but yeah anyway people i'm going to end off now because i've been going for quite some time and i think I've, I've i've said everything i need to say on these two polls but i am enjoying doing these videos on the polls and also reading out people's comments and feedback sorry if i didn't read out your comment i know there was one poll that i didn't get to but we are close to the hour now but yeah thank you very much for all of your feedback and taking part in those polls it has been an interesting and enlightening experience and i hope other content creators see this and they can sort of think well yes i, I would you know what, where my passions are aren't where captain steve's are but it is nice that there are those little niches and those little mini sub communities inside of the community but we all sort of link up in a roundabout way and i i, I did find that at the actual um, community sort of well the the gathering that we had the uk meetup that really did open my eyes to that there are so many ways that people enjoy no man's sky it was freaking awesome anyway people take care and uh, goodbye goodbye and goodbye again